Hello, everybody, and welcome to Tips and Tricks Tuesday. My name is Valentina V, and I'm coming to you live from my bedroom in Los Angeles. Yes, I have turned it into a studio. This is what it looks like. If you can hear me, if you can see me, then give me a little cat emoji, any cat emoji. There are so many cat emojis in the chat room. We are live streaming both on the Adobe Care Faith. Adobe Care YouTube page and the Adobe Video Facebook page. So simulcasting, simul streaming for the first time, hopefully successfully. We'll see. My internet's been in and out, but I'm glad to see you. Today's topic is how to slay on social, which means how to make different types of videos for different social media using the same assets. And I have an interview today with you, um, but I also have a full on tutorial and to get all of the info for that tutorial go ahead and head to adobe.ly slash tips tuesday and there you will see um the manual that i have made specifically for this tutorial and you can follow along over there that is also the place where you can enter for your chance to win a full 12 months of Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, last week's winner is Howard Mailer from Australia. So congratulations, Howard. You have won two or 12 full months of Creative Cloud. Um, you could be the next winner if you go over here. So check it out. Looks like I got a lot of cat emojis from Facebook. They're coming in. A couple are coming in from YouTube. I have my laptop pulled out here in front of me with both feeds so I can monitor all of your comments coming in throughout the entire session. If you want to ask comments, go ahead and do that. I love comments and I'm sure our guest does too. Speaking about our guest today, she is a multi-talented, multi-hyphenate, professional. She is not only a filmmaker, she is a world champion skimboarder and a skateboarder. She lives in Laguna, not far from where I live, and she's coming to us also live from her house. Welcome, Amber Torrealba. Hi, Amber. How's it going, Valentina? Thanks for having me on. Um, thanks for being on. We kind of look similar right now with our headphones and our like colored lighting. It's very cool. I feel like a streamer. I feel like follow my Twitch. Um, so Amber, uh, I think you it's might, the vibe. I it like is it. The vibe. <laughs> yeah, I think <laughs> you may be frozen on my screen. I'm not sure if she's frozen on your screen, everybody. But you know what? I think her audio is coming through. So if she freezes for a second, don't worry about it. She'll be back. Um, so Amber. Uh, I just described you in your intro as a multi-hyphenate, multi-talented creator, and I am too. And something that I'm always getting told is to stick to one lane, to stick to one thing. And that is so annoying to me because uh, it's okay to be good at more than one thing. What is your opinion about being, you know, multi-multi-everything? Yeah, that's something that I've always thought about because I see people focusing on one thing and kind of taking these paths, you know, throughout my whole life. And I've always kind of been all over the place, whether it be sports or video games or being behind a camera and just so many different things that I love. And I finally realized that that's kind of just my personality and you have to work best with who you are. And I've found strengths in that. And it's been really cool to find that balance of, you know, working with those two different strengths of me wanting to be, a, you know, a pro skimboarder and then using that to kind of work along with my filmmaking and being able to tell unique stories based on that because I have a unique story in itself because of me not you know taking that original just basic path Well, it's kind of crazy because I was always into sports growing up and I, you know, I played varsity basketball and I thought I wanted to, you know, be in the WNBA one day and all these things. But eventually you realize, you know, when I went to college and I had to focus on school and work and I decided to kind of focus more on an individual sport like skimboarding because I loved being by the beach. And I realized that there wasn't many women 
I'm in doing skin boarding. Oh, I just realized I, really I had not I had not turned my audio on in the last I saw, like, one. Guys always charging it. I wanted to kind of keep up. There's uh there's two things. There's a bit of a stream delay and also I forgot to turn my audio back on. So the question, by the way, for those who didn't hear it for Amber was how did you get your start with skimboarding? Apologies, Amber, if you could continue. Thank you. <laughs> no worries, no worries. We all know how these uh streaming things go, especially Truly. with all of us working from home and everything like that. So it's just uh it's interesting with <laughs> yeah. With uh, with skimboarding, it's just one of those unique sports, and I found it kind of later on. And you know, I was you know kind of graduating high school at the time that I found it, and I really never thought too deeply into pursuing it as a career. But as I really found myself, you know, migrating back to the ocean and driving, you know, on breaks from college and work, and I really found that this is something that I really wanted to pursue and be one of you know one of the best at. And it was cool because after graduating in college and with a marketing and digital media background, I was able to kind of combine those things with, you know, pursuing skimboarding and pursuing that marketing and digital media when social media came out. And that's what's so great about social media is it gave me that platform to really show where I have, you know, whether it's photography or videography or skimboarding and really just kind of excel in those ways. A lot of people who are, um, who have a background in marketing or who know about marketing do excel at social media because there's a lot of things within social media that you have to be aware of. It's not just the actual like size of each video, but it's also what are the trends? What are the lengths that videos have to be? What's some trending music? What is, you know, who are the audiences on each social media and how do you customize your content for each audience? What would you say, do you have an audience that you focus on or a type of person that you hope watches your videos? Or are you more of like a four quadrant type of person who is trying to get, you know, both the young and the old and the male and the female and everyone in between? It's great to like really focus on just the feeling that I'm trying to put out. And what I've really realized is it kind of hits all spectrums, whether it's an older person or a younger person seeing skimboarding or just seeing travel, uh, you know, footage for the first time and things like that. It's really the, f the feel that I want to give out and a vibe that I want them to feel based on, you know, the cuts that I make and the transitions that I put out and really just finding my own style. It's been really fun to kind of even show my videos to my grandma and things like that and kind of get her vibe and just you see if she even understands it because you know that if you can show it to somebody that has completely no understanding of what you're putting out but can make their own you know inspiration from it then you know that you're, you're getting a message out there yeah shout out to my dad who's probably watching but that's something i think about a lot is um if my dad will be able to understand something or if my if my dad can like connect with something i make then that means that i've done a good job um, because it means that it's, I don't primarily make videos for everyone, right? I make videos for people who are like extremely technically proficient in whatever they're doing because I do tutorials. So it's fun when somebody who doesn't know the tutorial can be like, you know what? I can follow along. And I'm like, great. That's awesome. We have a question on YouTube from, um, Ashley Cheney who asks for the multi hyphenate talent. How do you introduce yourself? The dreaded, what do you do question. It's a really good question. That's a tough one. Yeah, so I've always found that tough because I always introduce myself as, you know, uh, a professional skimboarder and filmmaker. I even have a hard time saying world champion skimboarder, even though I've won, you know, three championships uh, out here in Laguna Beach. And it's just it's hard because you really have to find a way to feel you know comfortable with how you define yourself. But I really have never found a way to define myself in in one certain way. So I kind of stick with two things that I can kind of build off of and then kind of go into the, describing really what what the full spectrum is. Yeah, I do a similar thing where I'll say whatever the thing is based on what I'm doing. So right now underneath me, it says Adobe Master Trainer, which I am, but I'm also a director, cinematographer, editor, filmmaker. Um, I, I also rep a lighting company. So it's like, there's so many things and I kind of have to choose depending on what it is. 
Um, we have another awesome question from YouTube from Hoya Vision TV who asks, I'm curious about how you stay on top of all of the trends in addition to all of the hats that you wear. This is something that is super important is to not only make content, but be aware of the trends and on each social media. So could you maybe give some examples or talk about how you adapt your content across the entire internet? I think it has a lot to do with how we consume content, right? I have uh, I have a lot of fun looking at feedback and really taking in what people say and how they feel about my videos and kind of just being neutral with it, having no emotion towards it or no attachment towards it. More so just seeing how they react towards what kind of content you've put out there. And then you can just kind of get a feel of who's watching your content on which platform because each platform has its own, you know, sense of audience and their own sense of vibe. And you can kind of cater your content towards each one of those platforms. And that's what I found is super important. So when kind of going out there and listening to, you know, the feedback, I really, really take that in and, you know, kind of transform my content based on, you know, what I do want to give my audience the next time. And, kind of maybe involve them in the process. And it's really fun to do that, especially with social media and when you're trying to grow. What's the way that you involve your audience in your process? One of the fun things I've loved to do, even with TikTok, is when they leave a comment, you can respond with a video. And sometimes they'll like throw out something like, go off of a like this and do that or slide out as far as you can and it's always fun to respond like that but sometimes what I do is I take a comment based on maybe so how somebody's felt about my video and it kind of even has given me video the ideas to make an entire story based off of it I made a video called dear creator when quarantine happened because I found a lot of feedback based on people you know not really knowing what to create and I found a lot of us being in that creative rut essentially and we didn't really know what to put out there because we, we stopped traveling or we stopped living our normal daily lives. And I found that that was really cool to use that feedback of how I felt like aura that was around the world and how we were all feeling. And I really wanted to put something out there based on my old content and put a piece that said, hey, like if you don't know where to start, just kind of start and you can always work with what you have. Um, speaking of your content, you do a lot of content from kind of like a point of view perspective like you it's like your eyes are seeing what what the what the um camera is seeing and we see your hands in the shot as well is that something that you've developed recently or like how did that look come about for you So that was actually the first type of filmmaking that I learned to do because I only had myself when I was skimboarding and learning how to shoot video because I was out in you know a small town called Melbourne Beach and I was always practicing when I was becoming a professional skimboarder and I only had a GoPro and a mouth mount so I would walk around with this GoPro in my mouth and film my feet and my hands and eventually I would get home with hundreds and hundreds of clips and I was like well I should make a story out of this this is almost like you're seeing like my whole everything you would see my falls and my reactions you would hear like my grunts and my like everything it was like you would feel my mood and I really started to develop stories and my own point of view based on how I love to make videos because I want to put people in my shoes and make them feel what it's like to kind of pursue what I do in skimboarding or out in the water if you've never had a chance to go to the beach and such like that. Yeah, I think a lot of your content is specifically um, to to let people know what it feels like. You, you focus on not just having something that's beautiful and aesthetic, but also on bringing people into your world and almost like understanding how it feels to be out there on the beach, on the waves. Is there anything that you do in editing to help sort of, you know, drive home that like feeling of being there of seeing it or hearing it or anything like that um, 
Yeah, 100 percent. That's where I really get passionate about editing. And I love to kind of, you know, especially when you're in those moments where you're charging a wave and you may go from full sprint and thinking you're going to catch something and then you fall and you're underwater and you're caught under heavy shore break. And that moment of being scrambling under like a washing machine underwater, everything's muffled and the world just seems like it's stopped in slow motion. And it's really cool to use editing to not only slow down clips for those moments and how it really feels for me, how everything's moving in slow motion, but really to kind of give that feeling of even if I'm showing music in my clips and I go underwater, I'd like to muffle the music to make it feel like, you know, that's how it would really sound if you like hit the water and you're stuck underwater and that's really the whole clever. world's muffled. And it's really cool to kind of put people in that perspective. So yeah. I love doing that. It's fun. <laughs> as far as your workflows go, um, are you mostly editing on the go? Are you editing um, on your computer, on your laptop? What does that look like? Like when, from when you get the footage to when you actually put it out there online? It's interesting because especially with social media, I have to have that balance of which clips that I have to choose to hold on to. And that's another thing that's tough, too. If I get a really good wave, I don't want to just throw it out there the same day and kind of almost like kind of blow the excitement and the lead up to maybe showing that clip in a short film or maybe showing it in a series and holding on to it for a greater moment. So I have to almost categorize these clips and these ideas that I've went out there and shot and see how they come back and really choose when do I put them out there and use that strategy to maybe put out some of my B clips to TikTok and then maybe save some of the best clip and hold those for a YouTube video and things like that. Ashley has another great question. She wants to know how you learn to edit. So I actually taught myself how to edit um, because I had all those clips and I just used to see all these cool effects when I would watch other people's videos and kind of take in, you know, inspiration from other action sports people. And the more and more I edited, I learned that I learned like a new technique every time. It really just took hours and hours of trying to build my own story and my own style. And I made sure that since I didn't have everything at my fingertips, I didn't have like the best camera and the best uh, software at time in the beginning and I didn't buy any extra transition or anything crazy like that. I was really just using the basics because I was still learning. Um, it almost shaped my style better because when I started small, I didn't have this whole world of, you know, what I should and shouldn't do. And it really left this open mind for me to create that style that I do with transitions and different ways that maybe some of you have seen my work or if you check out my work on YouTube, it's yeah, I'm has showing just, it right I, now. I actually. found my own flow and my own style to really correlate with what I have. Yeah, oh, so, I, <laughs> um, you know, so it, it's really just been fun to, you know, find that. A lot of times it might actually be beneficial not to watch other people's content as much and just, just focus on yourself because then you don't start copying everyone and you can kind of develop your own unique perspective on things and your own unique style. And one way that you do it as well is with color. Um, you do have a color palette, whether it's intentional or not. A lot of your videos, a lot of your thumbnails, your Instagram, they tend to be in this teal um, range, in this teal vibe. Is that something that you specifically sought out to do? Or is, was that something that, you know, you developed over time? Yeah, it's cool because it was almost developed over time because I realized that I just fell into this groove of really liking these colors and, you know, my signature brand and my products that I have, like my sunglasses and my watches, almost like the teals and that kind of thing. And eventually I started to transform my Lightroom presets that I made for myself into an Instagram filter. And I wanted to correlate, you know, that Instagram filter with the feel of when people you see my videos on YouTube, they can get that same kind of feel for their Instagram filters. And I like to go on that teal side because I like to stay within the realm of my branding. And that's really what I just, I love looking at just blues and teals. And I have a lot of fun playing with, with that color. <laughs> well, um, I also have a brand color. It is this kind of like purpley, um, 
pinky thing. And it was the same way that I wasn't aware that I was doing it until it sort of fell in my lap. And I'm like, you know what? I love it. Living with it. Living with it. Um, I do want to mention, because we are running out of time, both you and I, we are both going to be instructors at Adobe Max, the Adobe Max conference, which is a yearly conference that um, basically brings together some of the best creative minds in the world to teach sessions. So we have people like Conan O'Brien, Ava DuVernay, Zendaya, um, Annie Leibovitz, Tyler, the creator, you know, just our contemporaries, you know, my peers, basically. And you also have, by the way, uh, Valentina V and Amber Torrealva, who are speaking there. Amber, uh, what classes or class or what, what are you teaching at Adobe Max? What should people check out? It's free, by the way. It's free, everybody. Yeah, it's free. You should definitely check it out. It's cool. I'm teaching like four different types of courses, like how to tell a story in 60 seconds or less, some quick tips on social media, and even the finishing touches on how to do similar to what we were talking about today, like uh, transferring your videos, even if they're made for YouTube and posting teasers on Instagram and different platforms like that to really disperse your content at its best and get your audience really watching all of the things that you're uh, putting all that work into making. Yeah, so definitely check out uh, Adobe Max. That is at max.adobe.com. You can sign up for it. It's going to be a really great time. I'm also doing three sessions and talking about multicam editing, talking about how to do stuff for social media and how to do effects on your videos. So thank you so much, Amber, for coming by, sticking with any technical difficulties that we may be having. Um, I'm sure you being in Southern <laughs> California, you are super aware of our internet issues. So I appreciate your understanding there. If people want to check out more of your stuff i know you are on every social media imaginable but maybe just give us like the top three that you would like people to check out sure yeah thank you so much and uh, i would really recommend checking out my youtube channel that's youtube.com slash amber torialba it's just my name and uh, my Instagram, I put most of my content on there, and that's Instagram.com slash Amber Torialba. So you can find my name across all the social media platforms as well. And I really appreciate you, Valentina, taking the time to chat with me today. I think we have, like, a lot of fun with all the different filmmaking stuff. We could talk forever, and uh, it's been great. <laughs> Truly. I'm looking at the time, and I'm like, oh, I wish I could talk with her more, but I do have to get to the tutorial. So I appreciate you being here, and I'll, I'm sure I'll talk to you more later. Bye, Amber. Bye. Thanks again, guys. All right, so that was our chat with Amber Torrealba. If you'll just give me a, a, just a minute to reset everything so that I can switch over to the tutorial. If you would like to get all of the notes for the tutorial, you can go to adobe.ly slash tips Tuesday. And there you will be able to get um, all of the, the documentation, all of the notes for this tutorial. It is super, super easy. Um, to download, the way that they look is, let me pull them up on screen right here and pop on over to it. So this is what you'll get. You'll get a manual and uh, it's a little bit about me, but then everything will be broken down for you bit by bit, step by step, the whole process so that you can go and uh, get that. So that is at adobe.ly slash tips Tuesday. And the way that I do these tutorials is I'll literally go through the manual so that if you are on it, you can follow along. Now, the first, um, th what I want to start with today is I want to start with my phone, actually, with a tutorial on my phone. And of course, I had it perfectly set up right before I started going live. But now that we are live, it just refuses to cooperate. So just give me a quick sec to figure out why that's happening. Um, perhaps restart my connection to it, and then we'll see if it actually starts working or not. I may have to restart this program. Just so you know, when I'm live streaming, I have about 
four programs, four or five programs going to enable me to live stream, to show my screen, to draw on my screen and all that good stuff. And not all of them are super compatible with each other. So sometimes it takes a little bit of, of trial and error. In the meantime, please do let me know in the comments, number one, two things, right? Number one, where you are watching from, where in the world you are tuning in from, I would love to know. And number two, I would also love to know uh, if you have any questions for me or if there's anything about editing that you would like to learn. I teach Adobe Rush, Adobe Premiere Pro, also Adobe Audition and Adobe After Effects. So if there's anything in either of those four programs that you are just dying to know, um, please do, you know, send me a little message and I'll be able to check it on either the uh, YouTube or on the Facebook. Bruce says that he is tuning in from his couch. That's amazing. I wish I was on my couch right now. My couch is one of the more comfortable couches I've ever been on. Um, okay, let me try this again. <laughs> Basically, if you want to know the nitty gritty, I am using AirPlay to send my screen over to my other screen. And then I'm doing a screen record from the other screen, if that makes sense. If it if it doesn't work, I'll just open up Rush on my device here on my main device. I just was hoping it would work on the computer but perhaps or on the on the phone, but perhaps not. Let's see. Uh we have somebody from After Effects. Matthew would like to know everything about After Effects. We have somebody from Bangladesh tuning in as well. Let me see if I can maybe restart this program. The thing about Rush right now is that Okay, well, I have it up, but I'm just going to give it one more shot here. Again, if you want the notes, you can go to adobe.ly slash tips Tuesday and you can get all of the notes for this lesson. Please stick tight. I will definitely be teaching a lesson. I've never in the history of this show not ended up teaching a lesson in some way, shape or form. Again, if you would like to join Adobe Max, the Adobe Max conference, that is, you can do so at um, max.adobe.com. And if you go there, you can find all of the information for the Adobe Max conference, including uh, how to sign up, who the speakers are, some cool sessions that you can go to, some cool people that I'm looking forward to learning from are Ava DuVernay and Annie Leibovitz and of course Aquafina, one of my faves. So you can definitely go there, check it out. Um, usually this conference, when you go in person, it's, it's, oh look, Amber's on here as well. Amber's face is right there. Usually when you go to this conference in person, it is hundreds of dollars. And I think I'm over here too, kind of kind of on the edge there. But this year it is completely, completely free. <laughs>
my goodness. All right, here we go. I got it up. I got my phone up in the time that it took to watch that trailer. Wow, that was a rush. But I got my phone up. Here is my phone screen. You can see it, hopefully. Let me go back, turn the uh, turn the auto live back on so that I can switch around. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and enter into premiere rush actually first i'm going to enter into my photos so if you have recorded anything on your phone or if you have any videos that you've transferred to your phone they will be in your camera roll and sometimes those photos are quite deep into your camera roll so that when you pull them up in um, adobe rush you'll spend a long time looking for them right so my biggest suggestion is always take those photos or those video clips that you want to put into your project, select them and then create a new album with them. So in this case, I'm going to say um, add to album and then new album and then I'll name this new album and I'll name it 001 Toronto. That way it'll pull up at the beginning of all of my albums because I named it 001 and I'm gonna say save. Okay, and now I'll pull up Adobe Premiere Rush, and when you pull it up, it shows all of your past projects as well as all of your, um, just, just everything that you've done in there. So right here, you can see I've done a lot of Premiere Rush projects. I use Adobe Premiere Rush as like my main thing for when I post to social media, if I wanna speed up a video, if I want to make a vertical video, if I wanna change orientations or anything like that. So if I want to create a new video, I go down here to the plus and I say add media. So when you say add media, not only are you adding media, but you are creating a completely new project, right? You're a new Premiere Rush project. Now I can say get it from camera roll, right? But if I say get it from camera roll, it's going to go through my entire camera roll. I'm, I'm going to have to find it there. So instead of getting it from camera roll, I'm going to go to get it from the albums and I'm going to find it in my albums right there, 001 Toronto. And those are my clips. Now, a couple of things that I can do straight off the bat. Number one is the order that I click the clips in is the order that they will appear on my timeline. So I can already kind of start pre-editing it to kind of see what I want the order to be. Now, if I zoom in here real quick, let's just zoom in. So here I have um, a couple of different clips. Let's start on this fountain clip and then maybe I'll go to, um, I don't know, let's see, it's the fountain, then I'll go to the flat iron, and then I'll actually show the flat iron, and then I'll go to this one, maybe uh, the close-up of the hand. Actually, no, I'll go, I'll go uh, the fountain, then I'll go the bird, then I'll go the flat iron like that, close-up of the hand, the fairy, the fairy, maybe I'll end on the fairy, so I'll go like that. And then, I don't know what that'll be for, but I'll do that there. And see how it gives it to me in an order that makes sense. And then at the bottom here, I'll be able to click sync with CC. And what that does is it allows me to then bring those clips onto my computer to be able to work with them on my computer or on another device. It basically syncs it with your Creative Cloud so you can open up those files on another device. Now these files are 4K, so they may take a little bit of time to sync, but I'll click it anyway. And I'll title the project name, I'll say um, Toronto Video. And there we go. So now that I've done all that, I can, let me make this full screen again so that you can see it. Now that I've done that, I'll click create. And it takes just a few seconds, but it'll put all of those clips in order for me right there on the timeline. So they're already in order, which is great. Now you're probably wondering, okay, well, you have dumped all these clips here, but how can I actually see any sort of tracks, right? Maybe I'm an editor, I'm used to seeing tracks. Well, down here at the bottom, there is a little button and it lets you see what the tracks are. So if you go down here, 
that little button that looks like an E, you click that and that'll pull up your tracks. So now you have the, you know, the video tracks, the audio tracks, so now you can work on them independently. Let me, uh, let me make this back to full screen again so that you can see everything. You also have a preview of what your video is going to be up top so you can always see it and you can always work with it like that. So the first thing that I'm going to do because all of these clips are slow motion and I'm going to mute all of them. So while being on the clip I'll go to audio and there is a mute clip button and I'll just click mute clip and so therefore it's muted and I'll mute all of them. As I move from clip to clip the menu doesn't change so if I stay on the same menu I can just keep pressing mute and that way it won't bother me when I'm trying to edit this to music. Speaking of editing this to music, if I want to add music, all I have to do is go to the plus button on the bottom left, plus, and it'll ask me what I want. Do I want to capture new footage? Do I want to add graphics, media, or voiceover? I want to add media. So I click on media and it brings up that same uh, box that, that same dialog box again so let's say that you forgot to add a clip you can add it here or you can add music if you don't have music right here at the bottom it says favorites rush soundtracks so rush comes with a bunch of soundtracks that you can choose yourself to see if you like so you can play them i don't know if this will play yeah it does play quite loudly and then you can see what you want. I kind of like that one called Particle. What's World Traveler like? That one's cool too. Let's just do, let's just do Particle. Why not? So we'll do Particle. And we'll select it and it puts a little one next to it and it says particle on the bottom so it tells me which track I've chosen and I'm gonna say add. So it has already added it as a music track here at the bottom and if I wanted to let's say it's a lot longer than my clip if I wanted to fade it out eventually I could fade it out but for now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep it the length that it is and then I'll fade it out once I know what the actual length of the video is going to be. Um, give me just one second. Okay. Had a little warning pop up on my camera. Just one sec. Again, if you want all of the assets for this lesson, you can go to adobe.ly slash tips Tuesday. One second. Please bear with me as I adjust a few things. Okay. Mm -hmm. One quick sec. Almost done, almost done, almost done, almost adjusted, and we are back. Okay, so here I am back in Rush. I had to um, turn myself off for now, but I will be back in just a bit. And uh, we have our um, video playing through here. It's already in the order that we want, but there are a couple of things that we need to do. Number one, I would like to edit this to music. Number two, I would like to color these clips because they're not all colored. And number three, I'd like to open it up in my computer later so that I can actually, you know, continue working with it, whether it's in Adobe Premiere Rush on the computer or on my actual, um, on my actual Premiere Pro project. So I can see it here up the, at the top, you can see there is a little blue icon that's slowly filling up that is the sync to creative cloud so that means that those files are currently being uploaded to creative cloud so that i can open them on my computer and everything will be synced when i get to it which is a pretty cool feature and it's pretty great that it's happening concurrently with me editing this project right now so let me go into this and i think it's quite loud so let me turn down the volume for now so i'll go to audio and I'll go to clip volume and I'll turn it down so it doesn't play as loudly for us. 
And then what I'll do is I'll lock the track. So I'll press the track lock at the bottom to lock it so that I can't touch it so that when I'm cutting my clips, I'm only cutting the video clips. And I'll start at the beginning and play through it. Oh, now it's a little too quiet, huh? Let's see. For some reason now I can't hear it on here. Okay. Well, I can't hear it, but <laughs> you can. So that's weird to me. But um, let's just say that I have cut it. So I'm cutting all of these clips shorter and I continue cutting them shorter. I actually already did this. So let me just pull up the one I already did so that I can show you with it all cut. So I'll go to this, I'll go to open. You can also have multiple, um, you can have multiple sequences within your single project if you want. So you just go to the bottom here next to the plus sign. That is all of your project assets. And there you could have multiple sequences. So right here I have one with just music. So if I open that up, I go open. So this is my just music where I just threw the music in and I still have all of the clips. Then I can go in there. If I want to duplicate it, I click the little uh, three button, three, three dot menu and you can duplicate it. So now it's been duplicated. I'll put it at the, it's being put at the bottom here. I can click on that. I can now rename it to something else. So I can rename it to like O2 now uh, first cut or something like that. First, first cut and I'll say rename and then it's right here O2 first cut. I can open it and then I can start to edit it here. So yeah, it's still not playing for me. I can't hear it, but anyway, I can start trimming it down either using the trim handles on either side or um, using the little scissors tool. Like for example, here, I don't need the entire clip of the bird walking. I just want it to happen slightly before the bird starts flying and slightly after the focus shift at the end. So see how the focus has shifted? I want it to end before the focus shift. So I'll click the scissors icon and I'll delete everything after. And then I'll go ahead and I'll click the scissors icon here so that I only get the little bird flight. I'll select the clip before it and I'll delete it. And it kind of ripples everything forward. So there we go, the bird flies. You know, for this one, this clip, I want the whole thing right? But I don't want it to um, to be this slow. I want to speed it up. So what I'll do is I'll go down here to speed and having the whole clip selected, actually, so that you could see it a little bit better, let me turn off the track view like that. So I'll select the whole clip, I'll go to speed, and then I'll go to range speed and I'll increase the range speed. And that way, this entire clip will be a little bit faster for me when I play it through. And then I maybe I'll like this clip as well here, but I don't want to use the whole clip and it's still a little too long for me. So one thing I can do at first is I can cut it. So I'll cut it right there. I'll just drag the beginning of it over. And then what I want to do is I like the slowness here, but then I want to speed it up in the middle and then I want it to go back to being slow. So what I'll do is I'll go back to speed and these little speed handles, these little range handles, they're the blue ones at the top over here. What I'll do is I will drag them to the portion of the clip that I want sped up. So let's say I want just the middle bit sped up. Currently it is at 100%, but if I go to range speed, I can make it faster. And so right there, you'll see it's slow, then it's sped up and then it's slow again, right? Now it goes from being uh, slow to fast very quickly, pretty much instantaneously. It goes from a speed of 100% to a speed of 467%. Um, so if I want to ramp it, I can select on for the ramp over here. And then that way it'll speed up a little bit, you know, more gradually for me instead of just a very quick speed up. If you have any questions, please do 
uh, leave them in the comments of this live stream and I will be able to answer them. So here as well, you know, I can, this is a really long clip and maybe I just want to use this part of it. So I'll go back to my main menu. I'll click the scissors tool. I'll delete that. And then right before it starts getting kind of funky and wobbly, that's where I kind of want to end it. So right there, this next clip of the fairy, I, I don't want anything beyond like there. So I'll click the scissors tool, delete everything after it, like that. And then for this one, you know, I don't need the whole thing again, and it's all kind of the same. So I'll just need a little bit of it. So let's let's just say that I've trimmed everything. Um, let me go back to let me go back to my menu here because I've already done a version where I've trimmed it, and I'll open that up for you. So this is what it looks like when I have trimmed everything. And I wish it played. I don't know why it's not playing. The audio, but that's okay. This is what the video looks like anyway. Okay, I am back. So that's what the video looks like. If I wanted to color it, uh, there's a couple of things that I can do. So for example, I can go down here to color and there are already some pre-built in um, presets. So I can just go through them if I want. This is cinematic, this is film, this is SL Kodak, SL Bleach, SL Fuji, and then there's a couple of more, you know, black and white ones, and then there's like a day for night and other stuff like that. But if I don't want to use them, I can actually create my own preset. So for this shot, for example, it, I think that it needs a little bit more saturation for sure. But now that I've increased the saturation, it's giving me a very like pink blue vibe and that's not what I want. So I'll take the tint, I'll take the pink out of it. I'll go to temperature and I'll make it warmer, something like that. And I'll go into the shadows and I'll increase the shadows a little bit and I will increase the contrast. So something like that is where that I want to live, what looks good to me. And you can actually uh, enable or disable it to check it and what it's doing by going to the on and off toggle on the right. You can see before and after. And now that I have decided that I like this, I can go to options and create my preset. So I'll create this preset and I'll call it um, warmer up warmer and uh, shadows up because that's basically what I did right warmer shadows up and I'll say save and now if I want to apply this to the next clip I'll just go to the next clip and here at uh, your presets it's already here warmer shadows up so I can apply it to this next clip that looks good I can apply it to this next one if I want I can apply it to this one as well warmer shadows up and it's basically going to make every clip a little bit warmer and it's going to increase the shadows of every clip, which is quite nice. So now that I've done this, what if I want to make this for, um, you know, like Instagram stories or what if I want to put this on my feed on Instagram or something like that? Well, on Instagram, what you really want to do is have the most screen real estate possible, right? Um, you don't want to really post a horizontal video because that's easier to flip through than something that is a little bit more vertical. But on the feed, you cannot post a video that is fully vertical, right? So how do we make this video fully vertical? Well, I'm going to save this horizontal version first, right? So we'll go to our project assets here. And um, this this is the one that says cut, right? Or let's do my transform controls and I will move it on the H position to the center. For this one, the bird actually moves out of the shot, right? The bird is in the middle of the shot at the beginning, but it moves out of the shot at the end. So how do I keep the bird in the center the whole time? Well, uh, the newest version of Premiere Rush now has uh, auto reframe. So I'll go over here to effects 
and I'll go to the motion effect at the bottom here. So if I go to motion, there is that auto reframe button. So I'll click auto reframe and it just takes a second and it has already auto reframed the bird. So now let's see what it looks like. Keeping the bird in the center the whole time. Isn't that awesome? That's pretty cool, right? The same thing here, if I want to auto reframe this shot, I'll click auto reframe, but it has not adjusted it properly, right? It's kind of kept the focus on the back of the girl's head instead of on the phone. So what do I do? I can adjust the frame. Here on adjust frame, it will let me choose the frame that I want to keep. And I say, I want to keep that focus on the phone. So apply that auto reframe to the phone and now it has applied the auto reframe to the phone instead of the back of the girl's head, right? So let's say I've done this whole thing and now I want to open up this project, this exact Premiere Rush project inside of Premiere Pro on my computer. What does that look like? Well, let's go to Premiere Pro on the computer. So here I am within Premiere Pro on my desktop and you can see right here, it says, open Premiere Rush project. That is an option for you inside of Premiere Pro. So if you click on that, what it'll do is it'll pop up uh, all of the projects that you have clicked sh uh, sync with CC on. So this is our Toronto demo project. So we're gonna open that one up inside of Premiere Pro. And here is that sequence that we were just working on Actually, I think it was called, yeah, I think this is the one for IG feed. That's the one. So this is the one that we were just working on and it, everything is right here. We can now adjust it. The only thing is once you have made this into a, a Premiere Pro project, I'll close all this up. Once you've made this into a Premiere Pro project, you can't save it as a Premiere Rush project and bring it back into Premiere Rush again, if that makes sense, right? So now that I have this, um, what I want to do is perhaps I want to add like an intro animation here, right? So I'll go to Window and I'll open up Essential Graphics. And here in Essential Graphics, I'll go to the Adobe Stock Store. I'll choose free, because I want like a free graphic something, right? And I'll type in title. So this will search for free titles that are available in the uh, Adobe Stock Store for me to be able to use in my project. So I'll choose something like, um, what's this one? If I wanna just check it, I can, you know, just do a little hover scrub on top of it so I can check what that is and see if I want to use it. Maybe I like simple title looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that looks great. Let's see what else I think. Um, sliding pop art title. I want something simple so that it doesn't, you know, overpower what's going on behind it. But kind of want some sort of background as well. Now there's 42 pages of this kind of stuff here on the Adobe Stock Store just for free, right? If I picked premium, it would be even more. So let me drag this graphic over here. So this is the large typography graphic. This is what it looks like just by default. That's the music from, let me, let me bring this music up. So I just select the music. Right now it's on um, the A33 music track when it comes over from Rush. So I wanna bump it up to the, basically like the A2 music track. And to do that quickly, what I'll do is I'll select the music track, I'll hold down Alt and I'll click up on my keyboard and that'll just bump that music track all the way up to A2 so that I can see it better and I can mute it if I need it to be muted. So I'll mute that. Okay, so let's, again, let's take a look at what that large typography graphic looks like. Yes, I like it a lot. Cool. So let me just make it shorter and then I'll go into it and I can change it. So for the background here, what I'll do is I'll make it just black and I'll change the opacity so that you can see behind it. And then for what the text says, uh, I'll just type in Toronto, Toronto. Toronto. That kind of looks cool. Awesome. 
Oh, and then we have the glitch bar here and let's actually make it, let's make it kind of one of the colors that we find in the glitch bar too. We'll make it like a lighter color like that. Okay, great. So this is what our, um, let's just say that this is for the Instagram feed. This is what our Instagram feed video looks like. Let me turn the music back on and let me make it full screen. <laughs> That is so loud. I'm so sorry. Hold up. So if I want to um, make this more quiet, what I can do is I can go to the master tracks here, master track, and I can make everything more quiet by just dragging that line down of the master track. This one needs a little bit of reframing, so we'll do that real quick, and I think we'll be good. So let me let me just quickly reframe that. Also, this is blowing out a lot, so what I can do is I can I can drag down. Oh yeah, I see why I see why it's blowing out because I increased it a lot to be able to hear it from uh, within Rush. So there we go. Now it's now it's back to normal. It's not gonna blow out. <laughs> It might still blow out a little bit. Let me lower it a little bit. There we go. Let me reframe this one shot right here. So I'll click on it. I'll go to position over here and scale and I'll just scale it up slightly. There we go. So now that that's done, um, what I want to do is I want to export this for, I want to export multiple videos at the same time, and then I can keep working on more videos. So I have this uh, for IG feed over here, but I also have this one that says color, so I'll double click on it. So this will be like my YouTube version of it. And let me just make sure that the audio is lower. Right. So this will be my my YouTube version. This for IG feed. This will be my IG feed version. Maybe I want one for IG stories as well. So I'll go into the for IG feed version. I'll right click on it. Go to reveal sequence and project. There it is in my project. I will right click on that. And instead of going to duplicate, what I'll do is new sequence from uh, sorry, auto reframe sequence is what I'll select. And when I select auto reframe sequence, I'll be t able to see select what um, what size I want that new sequence. So instead of the four by five, what I'll do is I'll do vertical nine by 16. I'll call it 034 IG stories. And I'll say create and it'll auto reframe it for IG stories. Let me just make sure that it looks good. I'll mute the audio for now. See, I need to just adjust the text here a little bit so that it fits. Adjusting the text size, there we go. Looks like it has uh, adjusted and auto reframe the bird, which is perfect. It has auto reframed everything. Up, oh, this one needs a little bit of adjusting on the auto reframe, so I will do it. Just do it manually, really quickly. There we go. This needs a little bit of adjusting as well. There we go. So yeah, and maybe I don't want this the flat iron because it doesn't fit. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll duplicate it on top of itself. So right now it doesn't fit, but if I make it smaller, drag it down, duplicate it on top of itself by holding it down, holding down Alt and then dragging up. Now I have a second version of it that I can put on top of itself. So now it fills the whole frame. This is something that I like to do for when I have the vertical videos. For the no fairy entrance, you can see that the no fairy entrance sign doesn't fit the whole way in this vertical composition. So something that I can do is slip this clip underneath itself so that it starts a little bit earlier. So what I'm, tr what I'm trying to say is if I wanted to use this clip, right, I could bring it out here I could expand it like this. I could start it earlier, right? 
like that. Then I can bring it back in to here and voila, now I see the whole sign, right? Because I've just chosen the earlier bit of the clip where you could see the whole sign, but you don't have to do any of that, right? You can just keep it here, change your uh, tool to Y, which is the slip tool, and then slip it underneath so you can slip it like this. And now it has started earlier in the clip. And I'll just make, move it a little bit so that you can see the sign a little bit better. There we go. No fairy entrance. And then I'll scooch this over like that so you can see a little bit more. So now I have for IG feed, for IG stories, and I have the regular sized version and they're all different, right? So I'll go to this regular sized version, make sure for IG stories, I have my uh, audio unmuted. So I'll go to the regular horizontal version and I'll press uh, command M. And what that'll do is that'll pull up my export settings box right here, my export settings box. And I'll just keep it on H.264 match bitrate high source. I won't change anything except for the output name. So I'll go to where I want it to be. So let's see, stream 24. I'll go to new Toronto for YouTube and I'll press save. And now instead of clicking export here, I will click Q. And what that does is it adds it to the Adobe Media Encoder Q. Let me put myself up here. So again, I'm clicking on Q instead of export, right? So I'll click Q and that adds 